washout. Near the end of Thomas's branch line there's a small station and close by the railway crosses a stream on a short bridge. As the snow melted, the water in the stream rose higher and higher, rushing and swirling in its hurry to reach the river at the bottom of the valley. Each time he passed the place, Percy watched the water anxiously. Don't worry, said his driver, it's got to come a lot higher before he can stop us. Percy shivered. He could remember the time when he had been stuck in a flood. He had got very cold and very wet. Next morning, Toby came up from the harbour. No problem with the stream, he said cheerfully. The water is much lower today. That's good, said Percy. He set off happily with Annie and Clarabel, and when they stopped at the small station, Percy looked carefully at the stream. His driver went to look too. Toby was right. The water level was much lower. All's well, Percy, said his driver. Come on, we've got a timetable to keep. They hurried to the junction, where Henry was waiting for them. When is Thomas coming back? asked Henry. If he does, he added, I shouldn't be surprised if he decides to stay as a museum piece. He's old enough. He puffed away, chortling at his own wit. Annie and Clarabel were most upset. Percy had to spend so much time comforting them that he was late leaving with his next train. Percy had his tank refilled with water at the station by the river, and this made him later still. Never mind, said his driver, we don't need to stop at the station near the stream this trip, so there's nothing more to delay us. They reached the stream quickly, but as Percy ran onto the bridge, he felt it sink slightly under his wheels. There was an ominous creak, the bridge swayed. Don't stop, Percy, shouted his driver in alarm. Keep moving! Percy didn't mean to stop, and that was lucky. Clarabel was the rear coach. As she crossed the bridge, it wobbled again. When her back wheels left it, there was a sudden loud crash. The bridge vanished. One second it was there, the next it wasn't. It was safe to stop now. Percy's driver put on the brakes and the fireman ran back to look. All he could see of the bridge was lying in the middle of the brown rushing stream. Annie, Clarabel and Percy were badly shaken. The guard telephoned a warning and then they all went quickly home. The fat controller closed the line while the bridge was mended. At first, Toby and Percy enjoyed their rest, but they soon grew bored. When the bridge was repaired, Daisy had recovered from her snowy ordeal too, and things returned to normal. But for some time afterwards, Percy was extra careful whenever he crossed the stream in which he almost had a bath.